Today's session mm -hmm. is titled How to Find Listening Prospects by Telephone. And um, one of the. Um, moving up. That's fine. That's great. <laughs> and I have two goals today. Number one is to sell you on the telephone. And number two is to show you how you can make the telephone your friend. Okay? Um, there have been more failed careers and more uh, death of real estate salespeople when they talk about you know getting out of the business from one thing and one thing only, and that is the fear of the phone. It is the fear of the phone that has caused, caused more people to fail out of the real estate business than any other single purpose, is the fear of the phone. Right? I agree. I, yeah, so mark those. <laughs> it's kind of scary at times, right? But the phone is your friend, right? I'm going to refer to this phone every now and then. So um, the phone, the telephone, right? Uh, why are we talking about the telephone when the internet is available, right? You hear you've been to seminars, workshops, and things. Well, you need to have a presence on the internet, right? Well, here's what I've learned that whether it's the internet or knocking on doors or no matter how you're looking for prospects, the phone is the quickest way to find them. The phone is the quickest way to find them. So if you want to uh, increase your business, then I suggest you use the phone. Many, many people use excuses as to why they're not using the phone. Um, one woman came up to me one day and, and uh, you know, she said she couldn't use the phone and I asked why she presented me with a doctor's note saying she had a psychological aversion to phone solicitation, right? <laughs> and, and you know, it's like I have all these different excuses as to why I'm not using the phone. Oh, it's too no noisy at home. Oh, I got to the office and I had all these things to do. We got all these excuses, excuses, excuses as to why not to get on the phone and use the phone. And so your goal or your job should be to eliminate all those excuses in any way possible. And if you need help with that, I'd be really good at helping you eliminate those excuses uh, <laughs> if, you, if you ever want to sit down and talk about it as to why you're not using the phone. I'll pay you. I'll pay you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, you, if you started using the phone, you could afford to pay someone to make the calls for you, absolutely. Or you could even do it now. Um, you know, if you found someone that absolutely loves being on the phone, um, and it's rare, someone who loves, you know, making those calls. Um, what if you put an ad in the paper and found someone who's in high school and they get out of school every day from three to five and they just make calls for you and identify potential prospects and then when they find a live one they hand it to you because you need to have a license in order to make an appointment so they can't make an appointment, they can identify a prospect for you and then hand, them, hand you over the phone, right? What a perfect person to, to do that for you because they have not been abused by the world yet. So they don't know, you know, <laughs> you know how to do this. Um, I did this with my brother, actually. <laughs> you know, I love my brother. I, mean, I did do this to him. Uh, but I, a couple, um, last week I referred to my brother. I told you he's, he's nine years younger than me. And I also have another brother who's two years younger than me. But I remember uh, my younger brother, when I first got into real estate, I said, hey, have I got a job for you? <laughs> I said, you come on into my office, you know, I'm listening and selling in real estate now. It was probably my, it was my, it was well into my second year in the business. And I knew I had to make the, what, mm -hmm. the calls, right? And uh, I said, okay, well. Did you have real aversion to the phone at that time? I just didn't like it, you know, it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to, you know, I don't know, I mean. It wasn't a really, uh, it wasn't my most exciting thing that I wanted to do. I love being in front of the seller and talking about all the great reasons why they should hire me. I just didn't like finding the seller who wouldn't, you know, freak out when I called them on the phone because I had the, the guts to call for sale by owners, which I wish somebody would have warned me in the beginning. No one told me they ate their young. <laughs> you know? uh, so anyway, I called, uh, I gave my, my, my young, sweet, innocent brother a list uh, for sale by owners to call by presenting him with the newspaper. And I said, here's what I want you to do, brother. I want you to circle all the ads that do not have real estate names attached to the ad, real estate companies attached to the ad. I want you to circle them all. Now what I want you to do is I want you to cut them out and paste them on a 3x5 card. 
Now what I want you to do is take all the three by five cards and put them in numerical order and have tabs that have the first three digits that are all the same, okay? And so he would do this every week. And what, what end, the reason why I did this is that I was able to find if somebody, I could identify people in their homes by their phone number, not by their ad. And so when somebody advertised the following week and changed their ad but had the same phone number, could very easily go through the card box and find out you know, which property was advertised more than once. It was a pretty easy, simple system. Uh, didn't take a lot of time, energy, and effort to work, and it was very organized. And I knew <coughs> who we were talking to, when, how, why, and where. Well, I'd already gotten this started, and then I handed it over to him, and I told him, okay, this is what you need to do uh, to get this going. Now, all you have to do is simply call the people on the phone, and all you have to do is simply say these things when you get on the phone with them. And he said, okay, good. <laughs> and I was going to pay him more money per hour than he would have made if he worked at a grocery store. So we thought, and, and uh, you know, he also, he had to, he had to wear a, a button-down shirt, and he had to get his hair cut in order to work in my office. So he did that. My mother was very, you know, excited about that, you know. Uh, his hair was, like, down to here. It was rocker, you know, and he was really excited. So he got his hair cut, put on a nice Oxford shirt, got into the office, and, uh, and I let him go. Okay. He was really excited about it. He comes in, I'm over by the copier machine over like where we have your resource room over here, and he comes running over, and uh, my, my family, they call me Jay, and he says, Jay, uh, whatever you do, don't call this lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh boy, I'm going to lose him now. <laughs> He's going to just quit. And I said, well, tell me about it. What happened? Well, she told me, she said, unless your boss can take a 3% commission and list it for 30 days, I'm not giving him the listing. And if he can do that, then you, then you have him call me. And I thought, wow. all I heard was, you have him call me. And I thought, <laughs> great. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to encourage him. I wanted him because I wanted to keep doing what? Uh, keep, making making those, calls. keep making those calls, right? Stay on the phone. Uh, because I knew the more prospects I had, the more appointments I had, the more, the more leads I would get, the more appointments I would get, the more appointments I would get, the more listings I would get, the more listings I would get, the more ready, willing, and able qualified buyers I would attract that I could refer to another agent and collect a 30% referral fee from and sell my own listings and make more what? Money. Per hour, right? Yeah. And so I knew that that was the formula. But I didn't want to pick up the phone. Can you relate to that? <laughs> right. <laughs> So, step the you know, and so in order to uh, show my brother, you know, and it, it kind of, it was nice. I, I guess my point in telling you the story is that you might want to partner up with someone, hold each other accountable. So now I was accountable. I had to show him not to be afraid of the phone because I wanted him to keep calling. So I, I had the guts to call this woman on the phone. And when I called her, she was so shocked that she became nice. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I listed a property for 7%. Listed it for 7%, took the listing for six months, um, and, uh, and sold the property, and I got leads from it and all this other good stuff. She ended up being the nicest woman in the world. When I came in and I met with her, you know, I remember she said these words to me. She said, um, I have a lot of stories about this one customer that I always tell. Uh, one of them is the one that I just told you. She was a for sale by owner. She actually wasn't expired before she was a for sale by owner because she had such so many bad experiences with real estate agents. She thought, you know what? These people are dodo birds. I can do this myself. You know? <laughs> and so she tried it herself, and then she met me, and she said to me, you know, I've interviewed two other <coughs> companies, and then I'm interviewing you now. And she said, the difference between you and the other companies is that they wanted to list my house for sale. In fact, one agent told me that if she listed my house, she was going to win a listing award at her office this month if she listed her house. And she goes, all you're talking about is selling my house. <laughs> and she said, I don't want to list it. I want to sell it. So I want to use you. Then I told her my fee was 7% after she said that. <laughs> but, you know, um, but, that's, but that basically is how it worked. And that gave both my brother and I the confidence to, to keep doing it. My brother quit. He, he didn't last more than two weeks. Um, and, uh, but he did a great job. And I, and I was really thankful that you know he actually helped me more than he knows because it helped me get over the fear of the phone. Just that one incident. It just took that one incident. Now, I had called people before, but I, didn't, I wasn't doing it consistently. You follow me? Did he quit because it was so miserable? Um, 
No, he did. I don't. No. It just no, wasn't for him. You know what I mean? It just, it just wasn't for him. It wasn't because of that call or because it was miserable. He didn't have anything specific that he told me why. Yeah. You know, it just. He didn't like to wear a tie. Or probably. Yeah, you know, it wasn't. Didn't like probably his wasn't boss. comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. He didn't like his boss. So, uh, so anyway, we had a, but you know, so what I'm saying is that you've got to get over that fear of the phone. But listen, gang, you know what? I've been there. I have tremendous empathy for you. I'm not going to stand up here and say, hey, go get them, tiger, you know, and, you know, knock yourself out and say, hey, it's easy. Just do it. I know it's not easy. But the difference between the people that are successful in this business and the people that are not successful in, the, in this business, it's not talent. It's not skill. It's not intelligence. It's not experience. It's just that some people are willing to do the things that other people are not. You know, I heard an old saying that if you just do the things that other people are not willing to do, you'll be in the top 10% of the most successful people in the world. In fact, pick any profession and any job in any profession and do that one thing that nobody likes to do in this business. You've already chosen real estate. Do the one thing that people don't like to do in this business and you will absolutely shine you will knock the cover off the ball. There are people doing it right now in your marketplace. People doing it right now in your office. And you know how they're doing it? They're doing the things that other people are not willing to do. <laughs> and guess what? When you do that, you have no competition. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, <laughs> we talk about uses that not using the phone. You know, a hundred years ago, Prospect, and we talk about saving time. A hundred years ago, what they used to do is they used to hitch, used to hitch up the buckboard, drive one day and one night, get to a ranch, and knock on the door and say, "Would you like to sell your ranch?" <laughs> no. Okay. Get back in the buckboard. <laughs> Buck up the horses, feed the horses, drive another day and one night, and get to the next ranch and say, "Hi, would you like to sell the ranch?" No. Okay, and go to the next one. <laughs> but today we have this awesome invention called the what? The phone. It's so much quicker, right? Imagine being a realtor 100 years ago, right? Cool. Yeah, it's so good right now. You have it so good. Um, the purpose of the phone. What's the purpose of the phone? I'll tell you what it is. The purpose of the phone is to find leads quicker. You know, it reminds me of a story of... Uh, about this, uh, this young man, his name was Mike, Mike O'Reilly, and he was Catholic, and uh, in the Catholic Church years ago, they used to have to have uh, confession and be absolved of their sins. So Mike, Mike O'Reilly goes to church one day, and, and he says to the priest, you know, I have, I have a confession. He said, I, I did hanky-panky, and he said, oh, well, you'll have to tell me who it is that you did that with. He said, oh, no, I could never tell you, and the priest said, well, was it so-and-so at the bakery? And he said, no, Father, it was not. He said, well, was it so-and-so at the library? No, it, it wasn't her either. He said, well, okay, well, I'll, I, I tried. He said, I, I can't do anything for you. So Mike leaves, walking down the street, bumps into one of his friends, and his friend says, hey, so did you get absolved? He said, no, but I got two great leads. <laughs> <laughs> The purpose of the phone is to find the leads quicker, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, let's get into your head, if you would, please. How to find uh, listening prospects by telephone. Some of you will write my jokes down. I appreciate it. That's good. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, I have to give credit where credit is due always. Uh, you know, this a lot of this uh, material is from... Floyd Wickman courses, mm -hmm. uh, even that joke, uh, credit yeah. to, to Floyd, you know, exactly. you've heard him say it, uh, mm -hmm. I've heard him say it a dozen times, and it never gets old, I still laugh at it when I hear it, and, um, and so, but, you know, obviously I want to tell a joke that's applicable to what it is that we're talking about, and Floyd is just a master of putting all these things together, and I'm just uh, happy to be able to re-deliver this information to you as, as he would have, as he would have told it, so, um, you know, if you want to, get a hold of some additional information, you really want to expand your knowledge and you want to get on a, uh, to get a jump start to your career, go to floydwickmancourses.com and buy some stuff. Uh, buy anything that appeals to you. Um, invest in your brain. You know, Benjamin Franklin said, if you take the coins from your purse and you invest them into your brain, your brain will put coins in your purse. 
right? <laughs> I think so. we have the tapes over here. Oh, you do? I yeah. don't know, I'm right. sure, because uh -huh. a lot of us took it, and then after a while we didn't need the tape because we were so good. Right, that's a good testimony. <laughs> okay, what is the quickest way to generate listing appointments? A, telephone prospecting, B, floor time, don't laugh, or uh, B, I'm sorry, B, open house, or C, floor time? A. 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 What are the three ingredients of generating listing appointments by telephone? A, find prospects, close for the appointment, handle stalls, or B, pick a street, organize a schedule, C, design mailing, send it out, and wait for the phone to ring? A. 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 <coughs> Do we all try C sometimes at one time, one mm -hmm. time or another, right? Sometimes we try C a lot, right? Even more and more and more. Yeah. I think the uh, the rate of return is uh, is less than one percent. Hey, Diane, how are you? And um, is it less now than? I mean, you said you used to send out like eleven hundred of them. Is, is the well, that was different. What I sent was uh, were mailings to my sphere of influence. These are people who knew me. Oh, they're people that I asked for referrals from, and these are people that I got permission to keep in touch with. Okay. Those people I would mail once a month religiously. Mm -hmm. uh, but to mail anyone, you know, to mail for sale by owners and expireds, you know what? It's better than doing nothing, but it's not the best thing you can do with your time, energy, and effort in your own money. <laughs> you follow me? Mm -hmm. If you want to get on the fast track of earning a living in real estate, mailing is not always the quickest way to get there. It's the phone. Okay, and that's why I didn't entitle the seminar "How to Find Listing Prospects by Mail," right? <laughs> because my goal, as as your as your leader, is to help you to get there quicker, right? There are many ways to get there, but the best way is to get there the quickest way, and the quickest way actually helps people the most as well. Because you're helping your prospects, you're helping your customers, and, and there are people out there that need your help. They need a great agent like you, and they can't find you. They don't know where you are. They've interviewed three dodo birds and they think that all realtors are like this and that's why they're going FISBO. And they, they, they're waiting to hear from you. Do you know who calls for sale by owners and expired the most? New people. So you experienced people in the room? That's your competition. <laughs> I mean, you might actually have something more to say to them than the new person from ABC Real Estate. You have no competition, <laughs> right? Some of you are in this room looking at each other like, I wonder how many people here are going to call all the FISBOs in the paper this weekend. You know what? Statistically, this offering for this seminar was available to, to about 150 people. You showed up. I'm guessing there are about 15 people in this room. I'm not, I'm not counting, but I'm just guessing by looking at the number of people here. And statistically, one or two people in the room will actually go out and implement what it is that I taught during the workshop. But don't get mad if I say that. I mean, that's just, these are just the facts, right? It's kind of like you can make 100 calls, get 10 appointments, and one listing. Those, those are just the numbers, right? <laughs> that's just the way it works. How much money do you make when you sell one house in this region? Depends. On average. Average? Five grand. Five grand? Okay. Four. Four grand? One. This is, this is amazing. Now feel this, okay? Now just feel the psychology of what's going on in the real estate industry. I mean literally, honest to God, if I wrote a check and I put your name on it, and I put it right here, and I said, okay, here's a check with your name on it for $4,800. It's yours, but you have to do one thing to earn it. You have to make 100 phone calls to for sale by owners and expireds. How many people would do it? Raise your hand. Right. Everyone would do it. Everyone in real estate would do it. But if I said to you, if, but here's at one point in your training in real estate, in our industry, somebody said to you, call for sale by those expireds and you'll make money. But yet nobody's doing it. You see the difference in the psychology? It's kind of like, you know, I know that if, and you know, if you made the calls, you'd make the, the check would come. So you have to put that out there in front of you. You have to kind of bridge that gap. The gap is, you know, you're, you're moving towards, you're, someone's trying to motivate you today by telling you the reward of gain, right? Feel this, just to prove my point even further. Uh, uh, Roberta, let's say I asked you, say, Roberta, could you go to your car, and now everybody feel this, and I'm, pretend I'm saying this to each of you, okay? 
I'm just going to use Roberta as an example. Roberta, could you go to your car, write me a check to uh, write it to John Miller, if you would, please, four thousand eight hundred dollars, and um, I'm going to ask you to make one hundred phone calls today between nine and twelve. And if you don't make the calls, I get to keep the check. If you do make the calls, I'll give you the check back, and you get to keep the money. How, if you did that, how would that motivate you? Would you make the calls? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know why? The fear of loss is a greater motivator than the reward of gain. See, now that you understand how your mind works, you can now work your mind. You follow me? <laughs> I know it's a lot easier said than done, but think about that. Right? If you make the calls, you'll make the money. It's a guaranteed. It's a guaranteed. It's a numbers game. And here's what happens. The more you call, the better you get, the higher your closing ratio is, right? The more calls you make, the more appointments you go on, the better you get on your appointments, the better your closing ratio is. I mean, even if you just show up and you say all the wrong words, but you show up often enough, you will be successful in this business. There are many of examples of that going on right now, all around you. <laughs> you th you're thinking to yourself, I met that guy. <laughs> How did he get all that business? How is that even possible? Well, you know, they might be doing it wrong, but they're doing it a lot. There's a story. You know, there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about that, right? Wow. Imagine if you did it a lot and you did it right. Holy cow. Right? The sky would open up for you. Yes. I'm a perfect example of that. You are? Okay. <laughs> so thank you. But it's fun. It's fun. Absolutely. It's fun. Thank you for saying that, I appreciate it. Okay, so... Uh, what number are we on? Three. Number three. What is the key to successful telephone prospecting? A, B, or C? Make as many calls as possible. Take things one step at a time and stay on track. Or C, call only when people a. are most likely to be home. A. A. This is one of those trick ones. I know it's a, a tricky one. Yeah. 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 It is the answer is B, but you wouldn't have known that wow. until you went through this course first. Okay, because I'm going to make a point. Okay, and the reason why I throw these little curveballs at you is so that you remember it more. Okay, number two, what is the definition of a prospect? Someone who's thinking of selling either now or in the future. B, someone who owns a house, or C, someone you know. All of you. B. B. A. A. Now, let me put it this way. If you had a choice to go on an appointment to one of these three people, which one do you think you'd be least apt to waste your time with? A. A. There you go. Now we're thinking about it right, right? <laughs> what about when you phone A. and they're not <coughs> there? And do you advise to, <coughs> excuse me, leave a message on their cell phone? Their phone? You can, um, and I can I can give you a dialogue that will that you could use. Uh, it's not in your notes, and I'm not going to teach it today, so this is a little bonus added in. Um, but if you are going to leave a message, you should leave this dialogue. Um, you should introduce yourself, tell them who you are, tell them who, who you're with. You know, so hi, this is Becky with Carlson GMAC Real Estate. Um, I have a real estate question I'd like to ask you. Please call me at your earliest convenience at blah, 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 blah. Thank you. That one dialogue will get more return calls than anything you could ever say. <laughs> and you know why? Because they don't know. They don't know why you're calling. <laughs> so they're curious and they call you back. And, and you say, and so they, and so let's, uh, let's say, Deborah, they return your call and they say, uh, yeah, you said you had a real estate question you wanted to ask me. What, what, what's going on? Well, I, was, I noticed in the multiple listing service that your property had expired, and I was wondering, is your home still for sale? In other words, if I had a prospect, would you be still interested in selling your home? That's your question. <laughs> if they say no, say, okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, no before problem. I hang up, yeah, but before I hang up, who do you know that would be interested in selling their home? Uh, when you did have your home on the market, did you know of any buyers that are interested in buying a home? So I'm going to ask for a referral before she hangs up. Um, and then if I want to build my sphere of influence, I might say, well, you know, um, can I have your permission to keep in touch? Sure. Well, now I have permission to send them a postcard every month, right? <laughs> or call them again. 
say, hey, how are you? Now are you interested in selling? Now are you interested in selling? Now are you interested in selling? <laughs> how about now? Would now be a good time to sell? <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> you kind of watch, though, that uh, no call thing again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How does that yeah. play into this? That's my biggest concern. Yeah, yeah. I knew somebody was going to bring that up today about the, the do not call list. See, what's Thank magical you. about the well, do not call list. they had an article in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely yeah. they did. And here's what is beautiful that makes it even better for real estate. And I, and I love this. Now, <laughs> the do not call list created something. And you know what it is? It got a list. People you don't want to call. It, it, it created a call list. A list of people to call that don't mind if you call. I mean, think about it. I mean, think about this. If you have to call people, if you're going to make cold calls, let's say, and you want to call a group of people on a street, and 90 out of 100 of them are on the do not call list, well, that gives you 10 people to call. And guess what? No one else is doing this. You think someone from another company or someone in your office is literally going to sit down and put 100 phone numbers through the do not call list to come up with, you know, 20 numbers to call? That's a lot of work. Are you kidding me? I, w I came into real estate to make money fast. I'm going to tell you, there's no quicker way to making money in real estate than using the what? See, they're trying to make money fast by waiting for the business. They're at open houses waiting for people to come in. They're sending out mailings waiting for people to call. Right? You're right. So uh, there are two different types of agents in this business. It's not new versus experienced. There are either active versus inactive real, real estate agents. And you are a active real estate agent, right? <laughs> what is the purpose of a telephone prospecting approach? In other words, the reasons you give for calling. A, talk to them, uh, uh, talk them into listening. B, to get an appointment or C, to see if you have a prospect? Mm -hmm. C. And the answer is C, yes, to see if you have a prospect. Now your goal is to get an appointment, but the purpose of the approach that I'm going to teach you, because there's an approach that I'm going to share with you, is to find out if you have a prospect. See, that has to be the first thing. And then once you find out you have a prospect, then you make a what? Appointment. And then you make an appointment, you got it. Okay, so if you go to your next page, you see that there are three parts. You know, uh, part number one is to uh, find a prospect. Point number one is find a prospect. Point number two is to close for the appointment. prospects it takes skill to do this okay it takes skill to close for an appointment if I had you every day right <laughs> and you were mine you worked for me directly by the hour and you just said okay what do I do now John and I taught you how to find the prospects and you kept doing it you got good at it. you became skilled by the by practicing and doing it um, and then you got good at, and you found the, the, a prospect, but then you had to develop a second skill, which is to uh, close for the appointment, right? And those of you who are in sales or have been in sales prior to real estate know that it takes skill to close for an appointment, right? You need to know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, correct? Yes. But all this is for nothing if you don't know um, the third part, and that is to be able to uh, handle stalls. Handle stalls. Number three, handle stalls. Because here's what happens. Um, you'll identify a prospect. You'll close for an appointment. And as you're closing for the appointment, and, and you say, I'm available now, or would tomorrow at 3.30 be better for you? And they say, well, I don't really know if I want to sell now, you know, because it's, you know, I think I'm going to wait till the spring. That's a stall. It takes skill to know how to handle a stall, right? How many people would like to walk out of this room today with that skill? Raise your hand. Mm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you find it out, let me know. I'm just kidding. I will, I promise, I will, I will give you that information, OK? 
okay? So I'll give you that information. Now, here's the key. Um, take it one step at a time and stay on track, you know? Too many people call and they try to handle stalls and close the point, and they mix it up too much. You know, I'm going to teach you a track. I'm going to teach you, uh, you know, a five-step process, if you will, that you need to go through. And if you just use that process, it will work. But the key is to stay on track, right? Now, um, it, the, uh, the process actually has uh, how many parts? Five. Five parts. How did you know that? Five <laughs> steps, right? <laughs> It's in your notes. Uh, number one is to um, is to identify who it is that you're talking to. Okay. So number one of the five steps is uh, to identify. Let me show you how this works. Uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Diane. Uh, <laughs> Diane's the only one that answered the phone. Thank you very much. Out of the 15 people in this room, Diane was the only one that was home and answered the phone. It was Thank a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah that's great. Right. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> uh, hi, this is John Miller with On Track Real Estate. Uh, um, is this uh, is this Diane? This is Diane. Yes. Okay, great. See how much skill that took, right? Not much. <laughs> it was good, right? Okay, so you identify who it is that you're talking with. Number one. Uh, uh, number two is you want to introduce yourself. John? Yes. Just backing up for a second. Do, is it good form to, uh, with someone you're cold calling or haven't met before, to, to address them by their first name? Is this Diane? Or do you, do you ask if is this Mrs. So and or Ms. So and so? Yeah. Or I'll leave it up to you. Uh, personally, my style, personally, is I like to just try to shoot for the first name. You know, um, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I know that when somebody calls me and says, hi, is this Mr. Miller? I just know that, uh, what do you want? What are you, 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 what are you selling me? <laughs> you know, what are you selling me? You're obviously trying to suck up to me and be respectful to me, but how do you know I'm someone worthy of respect? How do you know that? Why would you call me Mr. Miller? But <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it, it's, it's, it's telegraphing, you know, what it is that's happening. Um, again, you know what? I can tell by the look on some of your faces that you don't agree with that, and that's okay. Here's the bottom line. Uh, if you call on the phone and you make the calls, and even if you say the wrong things, if you call often enough, you will be successful. If you say Mr. and Mrs. to everyone, if you do that often enough, you will be successful. If I call and I use everyone's first name and that's the wrong thing to do, I don't care what you say. I will be successful. I've done this. It does work. Um, and I've used people's first names. And there are people that will say, hi, is, is this Mr. Fiore? And, you, and you're, now you, they've got your attention. You're like, oh, yes, this is Mr. Fiore. You know, and, and you're more, and, but if I called you and said, hi, is this Bill? You're like, who the heck? You might be turned off right away. Like, my name is William, first of all. Why would you dare call me Bill? And, you know, and so, you know what I'm saying? So it, here's the bottom there. line. It doesn't yeah. matter as long as you're making calls. Um, and uh, here's what really matters. Um, <laughs> very often times they forget about even what you said once you start getting into the body of your message. So uh, I would call first and I would say, uh, hi, ring ring. Hello. Hi, is this Diane? It is. Hi, Diane. My name is John Miller with On Track Real Estate. And so you first you identify, then you introduce. I misspoke earlier when I role played with you before. I introduced myself and then I asked if, if that was your name. So I kind of screwed it up. But uh, I didn't have it in front of me, so that's why. I <laughs> so, and my point in that is that you're going to have this dialogue in front of you. You know, uh, it's kind of funny to, to, you know, making fun of myself right now. But you know what? The bottom line is that, um, in order to avoid that type of thing, you want to have your dialogues in front of you. Some people say, "Well, I don't want to read the dialogue because people will think I'm reading." Well, <laughs> listen, they don't know the difference in your voice whether you're reading or not reading. And they, don't, they really don't know. And I guarantee you this, if I gave you a dialogue and you read it ten times before you picked up the phone call, you know, remember, remember we had that seminar and I said, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. how, did, how did you all know the words, right? You just repeated that song so many times you knew the words. Um, mm -hmm. Actors and actresses, you know, they, they learn their scripts and their dialogues and they learn the words. You know, truly the difference between the... The only thing standing in the way between you and your next commission check is knowing the words to something. You just don't know what words that it is that you're missing. So my advice to you is to learn all the words you need to learn in real estate. And uh, Floyd Wickman has that on his website. Uh, it's called the Dialogue Dictionary. It comes in uh, DVDs and you can watch them and listen to them. And, and it's very, very powerful. If you had to buy one thing and one thing only in real estate to improve your career, it would be that one product. That's it. 
because that's the only thing standing in the way between you and your next commission check is knowing what to say when the objections come up. Here's a beautiful part about real estate. There are a limited number of objections that people can give you. There are only so many things that people can say. And when none of that works, you found out that you don't have a prospect and you move on to the next one, right? <coughs> next, right? What about if you hate to receive calls? So yes. you relate to that all the time. Yes. That's why I hate to make calls, because I hate to receive them. They yes. call me at supper, they call me at whatever. There's never a good time. You don't know when to call. Are you on the do not call list? Uh, Are you on the do not call list? No. No. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. And they still call. I am, too, and I'm yes, getting a ton of calls. So I guess good. it's not that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it just expires, that's Well, fine. they expire. Yeah, you have to sign up again. Oh, well, well, so we that's a plus. Everyone's all on that, so you're on the phone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark so up it's, so, it's point. so hard. And so when they say, "Is this my name is Beauchamp? Uh, hello, mm. this Mrs. Beckham?" I know right away it's not a friend or anything. I said, "No, I'm sorry, she's gone to Japan." I, <laughs> 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 I say she's gone out for the year or whatever. I just hang up on her. But here's what I would do. Let's say. Let's say Mark was a prospect, and I couldn't pronounce her first or her last name, and I was afraid I was going to say it wrong. Here's what I might say. I might say, hi, my name is John Miller. I might go to step two <laughs> and say with On Track Real Estate, and I was wondering if you, before she even had a chance to hang up on me, I talk really fast, I'd say, hi, this is John Miller with On Track Real Estate, and I was wondering, do you still need to sell your home? I'm the cleaning woman. I don't, I don't know Not a problem. about but Now, <laughs> what, if, what if Mark was an expired listing? <laughs> or a for sale by owner. What would she, now, for sale by owners are not going to hang up on you. That's another huge thing you have to realize. Okay. They're, they're expecting calls from different people. Yeah, they're getting them they all the time. Have the information you can give them. Absolutely, absolutely. So first of all, pick your prospect. You know, uh, what you're talking about part is, is a cold call. Mm -hmm. and, um, and some of the best calls actually to make, I'm going to give you a dialogue that will prevent people from hanging up on you. Put it that way, okay? And once you start using this a little bit, here's the bottom line. Um, in coaching salespeople, okay, one of the biggest challenges I have is to get you to understand it. it's so hard to do this. It's so hard to do this, and it's one of my biggest challenges, is to get you to believe that not everyone thinks like you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because as human beings, we all think that everyone thinks the same way that we do, you know? Some people put a detailed, scientific, uh, incredibly brutal s comparative market analysis together, and their whole presentation is the CMA because they think that if someone was going to give them a presentation, that that's what they would like to see. And you get to page two, and the people are crying in boredom, okay? <laughs> because they don't think like you do. <laughs> there are other people who are uh, you know, let's say you, you have a, a couple and they're both engineers and they want that detailed scientific market analysis and, you, and you, all you talk about is how wonderful your marketing plan is and oh, by the way, here's the price and you don't have anything to back it up with because that's how you would choose a real estate agent. <laughs> know your audience. Know your audience. Very, very important. Um, and so, you know, you can choose your audience in real estate. You can choose to call people cold. You can choose to call for sale by owners. You can choose to call expires. I used to love making just listed and just sold calls. And I'm going to share with you a dialogue today that is awesome for that, especially if you're doing an open house. If you say, oh, I'm doing an open house, I'm saying, oh, well, are you, I go through the whole list of all the things you can do in an open house. Did you invite the neighbors? You know? I don't, I don't know. You have to check into that whether or not that fits into the do not call list or not. If you call someone up and say, hey, I was just calling to let you know I'm doing a, um, uh, I'm having an open house that, uh, right down the street from you. It's number 35 Pine Lane. Are you familiar with the yellow house on the corner? Do you know which one I'm talking about, Mr. Fury? Right? He says, yeah, I know that house. It has four bedrooms, three baths, uh, a two-car garage, and I've listed it for 439.9. And I'm having an open house this Sunday. I'd love for you if... Uh, if you could stop by and bring anyone else by that you'd like to, to check out what's going on in the neighborhood and different prices. Uh, I'm going to have uh, hot coffee and hot dogs there and, you know, oh, for the wow. kids and balloons for the kids and a, and, a, and a magician and a clown show and a Ferris wheel in the backyard. <laughs> so come on down. We're having, a, we're having a party. You know, come on down and, and check out what, what, what your neighbor's house is doing. Is that, is that a violation of uh, the do not call us? Maybe it is. I don't know. Check it out. Uh, 
but you know that's that's kind of a nice call to make. Um, you know what? I wouldn't hang up on that person that called me and said that. No. You know. They usually come though. The neighbors. Yeah. They usually come. Yeah. Well, they're the first ones yeah. to come. Right. Yeah. And um, Ken did an open house. Neighbor came. In, someone came oh, in. Yeah. List, listed their house. Mm -hmm. Selling their house. Helping them buy another house. You know. So it works. You know. It works. Um, okay. So. Um, so we're going to in, uh, identify, introduce yourself, and then uh, what you want to do is ask a prospecting question. Ask a prospecting question. Ask a prospecting question. Fourth thing you want to do is you want to give them a reason why you called. And then uh, the fifth thing you want to do is you want to ask again in a different way, okay? Now, I could just say, here's the formula, come up with a dialogue and go make your calls, but that would be mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I gave you some dialogues that fit this criteria for you. Go to the next page. And you know what, if I could have done just one thing and one thing only when I started in real estate, and that would be to learn how to just stay on track. Just follow the, follow the system, follow the track. You see, it, follow this track, <laughs> that's all. Don't veer away from it. Don't try to do something different because you think or you might want to do it, you might think it's better, it's something that you would like to hear. Use what works, okay? So. Uh, the first one, we have three different approaches, the general, the specific, and the specific person approach. Now, the general approach, because I've given you the specific property and the specific person approach, I would ask you to take the general approach and throw it out the window. Because I'll give you this reason. When you give them a reason for calling, the more specific the reason for calling is, the more believable it is the, the reason why you're calling. I mean, I mean, feel this. If I called you up and I said, hello, is... Uh, is this is Mrs. Boot Camp, uh, uh, Bo Camp, or, and, and they can't pronounce your name, right? And you pause, and, and, and let's say she says, let's pretend that she did say yes. I know you wouldn't say yes, but that's <laughs> smart. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, John Miller with uh, Carlson GMAC Real Estate. Have you thought about selling your house now or in the near future? Well, guess what? If you made enough of those calls, I guarantee you, you would get prospects. I know for a fact that you would get prospects. Do you happen to know of anyone thinking of, if they said um, no, then you would simply say, do you happen to know of anyone thinking of selling? And then they say, yeah. no, I don't know of anyone. Well, they might give you a lead. That ha did happen one time. Uh, I have a funny story to tell you in a minute about that, but uh, before I do, I want to get through this. And then, what's number five? Ask again. Ask again in a different way, right? That says, how about yourself? And here's what's funny about this. When people hear that, they go, aren't they going to get mad? And aren't they going to say, hey, you already asked me that question, you dodo bird. Get off the phone with me. No one has ever done that, ever in a million years. In fact, what they do is they give you a more of a pause. Or they might even say, well, I, we would, you know, it's not going to be for at least another six months <laughs> before we think about selling our home. Ooh, right? <laughs> but what did they tell you the first time? See, instinctively... Like I've told you this before, when you walk into a store and someone says, hey, can I help you? Hi, can I help you? And another person said, and you said, no, 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 I just, I'm okay. And then you walk into the store and then you want some help afterwards, after you feel a little more comfortable. Right. See, that's why the process works. Because when you get to here, they're feeling a lot more comfortable. So when you ask again, see, you're not asking this time to get, you know they're going to say no at this point, 90% chance. But there's a 50% chance they're going to say yes at this point. You follow me? Yes. Going back to the workshop that Jody O'Brien did last week, yes, and, and her um, suggestion that you don't answer closed closed end questions, yes or no, that you ask open ended questions. Sure. Yeah. Would would you uh, instead of have you thought about selling your house in the, now or in the near future? What are your thoughts about selling your house now or in the near future? Yeah, you could do that. It's kind of it's like the same question, and it's asking in a little bit of a different way. Sure. Yeah, I like that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, all you have to do is make the calls. It doesn't matter what you say as much as that you're saying something. 
You follow me? <laughs> so I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, spend a lot of time on the specific dialogue for that obvious reason. I'd be happy if you just made the calls, and you would too, believe me. <laughs> and from some of the stories I hear from some of your spouses would too, you know? <laughs> you know? Now, um, specific property approach. Now listen to this one. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Uh, or I'm sorry, I would say it this way. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, or Mr. or Mr. Jones. <laughs> and he would say yes, and I would say, yeah. you know, sometimes when you call and you get that voice on the phone and it's a, a deep, rough voice. I remember, I, I remember one time I said, "Hello, Mrs. Jones," and uh, I said, "Excuse me, I'm sorry, I screwed it up." I said, "Hello, Mr. Jones," and the voice said, "No, this is Mrs. Jones." And I said, <laughs> "Okay, you must get that mistake often, I would assume, right?" <laughs> you know. I'm sure I'm not the first person to do that. Come on. Uh, um, Next. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I promise you I'd tell you a funny story. This was literally, honest to God, the second week that I was in the real estate business. I hadn't had the training class yet, but they threw me in the office, and the manager said, just come in. Just come in the office. That was my plan. Just come in the office. So I go into the office. And I will never forget, I remember the color of the desk, the phone, the, 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 the weather outside. I remember everything about that moment in that day. It just comes back to me like something I'll never forget. Very vivid, you know. Um, and uh, the manager was walking by, and he was busy. He was in a hurry dealing with all these people that were actually selling houses. I was just sitting, literally sitting at this desk. I had an appointment book. I had, I had a suit and tie on. And I was ready to sell houses, but I didn't know what the heck to do. So the manager walked by, and real quick he says, hey, John, how you doing? And I said, I, and he kept walking. And, I'm, I, <laughs> and he walked by again, he said, what's up? What's going on? I said, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do? I know I'm supposed to be doing something. What can I do? And he said, he, he was so busy, he was so frantic at the time, he said, uh, he said, listen, do this. He grabs a phone. He picks it up. And then... He does this. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? My name is George. I'm with uh, Prudential Real Estate. And I was wondering, uh, somebody told me that there was a house for sale in your neighborhood. Uh, I think it was a white house. <laughs> it was white. It was a white house. It's right. It's near you. I know that it was near your house, right? And now keep in mind, he dialed a random stinking number <laughs> with the same first six digits in, in there. You know, like the, he, you know, he dialed a four one three five six seven, let's say, oh and then God. he just the last four were random digits. And, and then I hear him doing it, and he looks at me. He goes, <laughs> "Yeah, okay." Um, Oh, so it's a yellow, a yellow house. He goes, it's a yellow house. <laughs> yeah, it's a yellow house. Okay, you would. Do you know what number house that is by chance? Do you have, do you know which 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 one it is? Oh, it's right next. Your sister-in-law lives there. Oh, next door. Oh, that's great. And it, but it's right near you, right? It's near where you live, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Do you know what number house that is? Okay, sure. I'll wait. <laughs> she literally, honest to God, first phone call he made. I'm sitting there like. Oh, this was cool. She got, she left her house and walked down the street to, so she could see the number on the house. Walked back in, got back on the phone, and said, "Yeah, it's number sixty. Oh, number sixty-seven. And and your street name is what? Because he didn't know what street he was calling. <laughs> sixty-seven Pine Street, right? Oh, Pine Street. Okay, yeah. And he wrote down sixty-seven Pine Street. And so you you think they might be interested in something? All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, when when do you plan on selling your home? Oh, not for another not for another year, huh? Is it okay if I keep in touch with you and you know maybe a year from now, you know, I can come by and take a look at your property? Okay, well that's great. Well thank you so much, ma'am. I really appreciate it. Okay, have a good day. Yeah, bye bye. Uh -huh. And he looked at me, he said, Well, that's all you gotta do. That was great. And I'm just sitting there like, Wow, that's easy. Well, I made calls like that, and I didn't get one person, not one person, to leave their house to go down the street to do that. So, you know, there are exceptions for everything. No, I mean, think of the power in that. He you probably know called I mean? his own number. It was big. Yeah, I was going to say his mother. Yeah. I could hear the person on the phone. I could hear it. I knew there was somebody there. 
Oh, but I'm telling you, I'm just like, wow, that's great. Yeah. But then I learned, you know, <laughs> to yeah. hone it in. You like call people that you know <laughs> a little more specific. You know, be more specific. Use this approach. You know, you know. He knew the idea was that hey, if you just call enough people, someone's going to say yes. Someone's going to give you a lead, right? True story. Unbelievable. Funny, funny story. <laughs> so if you use the specific property approach, hello, uh, Mrs. Jones. Yes. My name is John with GMAC Real Estate, and I'm calling to see if you've considered selling your house either now or in the near future. Have you? And uh, let's say that they say what? No. I identified her, right? Look at this track. I introduced myself. I asked her the question, right? And then I have to give her a what? Reason. Yeah. Now, what if she said this? Have you considered selling your home now or in the near future? Have you? And she said yes. What should What should I do after that? When close. Remember the first five questions I asked. It was one of them was a trick one. What should I do? Stay on Stay on track. Stay on track. See, the average person goes, "Oh my God, I got a live one." Uh, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. No, I was talking to somebody else. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, can I come over? Can I list your house? And she says yes, and you say, great, and you hang up, and you didn't get the address. You, know, you don't even know where you're going, right? Just freak out. So what you want to do is you want to say, uh, the reason that I ask is that I recently listed, or I recently sold a house near yours. Now, what if you've never listed or sold a house near yours? What should you say? We. We have sold. Well, we. you say we, right, company-wise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What if your company didn't? What could you say? We, because we're all realtors. We okay. anticipate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we used to do this. When we ran out of uh, our own listings and we ran out of the listings of everyone else in the office that had, were listed or sold or sales, we would say um, a house was sold or a house was listed. And um, uh, it just so none of you freak out and get scared because I know some of you are going to make up like excuses as to why you would never do that in a million years. Let's say you want to prospect a neighborhood that uh, was a specific neighborhood you've been trying to get into, right? And there are sales and listings that have occurred in that neighborhood. You want to get in there. Well, all you need to simply do is you call the neighborhood and say, a house was sold in that area. Now, we did this one time, and I say we, there was a whole group of us in this office that I was managing, and, and we would make calls, all, like a whole group of us would get together and make calls all at the same time. And so what, uh, so what happened was, the owner of the house, their house was listed by an agent, and called the agent and said, this company just called and asked me if my home was for sale. How come, why did they ask me that? Why isn't it in the multiple listing service? Blah, blah, blah. And the seller got all confused and upset. Like, why is a realtor calling me, asking me if my house, if I want to sell my house, and they don't know my house is for sale? Well, we didn't know her house was listed by an agent. We were just going down the street index and calling all the homes on the street. And uh, when we found out it was listed by another person, we said, okay, you know, no problem. You know, sorry for the for, for the call. Oh, by the way, who do you know that might be interested in selling their home other than you? Right? Ask for a referral. And so. The agent called and got really mad and called me. I was the manager of the office at the time. And I just smiled and I said, well, let me read to you the specific dialogue that they're using. And I read her the dialogue saying that a home was listed, has been listed on your, on your street and blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, you can't do that. That's illegal. You can't do that. You know, that's blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, actually, I already did check it out with MAR and NAR. And I checked it out with our legal counsel. And that's totally fine. I mean, I can say that. It's OK. If you have any problems or any issues, please call them. Um, have a nice day. And she was all mad. Oh, she mad. So she, you know, I never heard from her again. You know, <laughs> never heard from her again, obviously. But you know, you can do that. It's okay to do that. Now, um, now some of you aren't going to do it because you don't want to get your realtors mad. Another excuse. It will be if you're going to do a certain street. Do that street on the computer. And then you can tell which one it is. Oh, man. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you give them the reason. The reason I ask is uh, a house was recently uh, listed or sold near yours at, and you give them the specific address. See how I put a blank there? Mm -hmm. You put this specific address in there. And as a result of our extensive advertising, we generated quite a bit of interest for homes in this area, and we need more inventory. Now, is that true? No, no not today. Well, yeah, oh, it's, it's true. It's it is. Oh, it's true. Hold on, hold on. Um, do 
Do every, does every person in this room have enough listings? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Do you need more inventory? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then say you, all right? Well, instead of saying we as an industry need more inventory, yeah. you say I need more and I'm, I'm looking for more, in, uh, and I need more inventory, right? Instead of we, change it to I if you want, if you're more comfortable with that. But if you didn't list the house, then you have to go from we to I, you know, and this, just make it sound right. Uh, do you know of anyone, and, and do you know of anyone thinking about listing or selling? Uh, might, and you, you might get a lead from them. Uh, definitely, we've had tons of people say, you know, my, my, my son is actually interested in buying a home. He's living in New York now. And great, because it's okay if I give him a call. And I call the son, and, you know, I said, by the way, your mom told me to call you. <laughs> what is he going to say to that? <laughs> hey, your mother said you better listen to your mom. Uh, and then how about yourself? The one that I love the best is this one here, but in order to do this, you have to find a specific person first in order to make this real, okay? So if you don't have a specific person, use the specific property approach until you find a specific person, and then once you find a specific person, then you can use the specific person approach. You ready? Uh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, is this Mrs. Uh, Jones? Hi, my name is John with uh, GMAC Real Estate. Have you thought about selling your house? No. No? Okay. No. Well, the reason why I ask is I have a couple by the name of Di Giovanni, and they work at EMC Corporation. They have three children, and they're looking for a home in the Feeding Hills area. Uh, and we haven't found them anything, and I promised them I'd, I'd talk to every homeowner in the area until I found the right house. Uh, do you happen to know of anyone selling? in your area, pause, right? How about yourself, right? <laughs> well, I don't know, at the right price, I might, well, why don't I come over and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I can give you an idea of what your property may be worth, and blah, 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 blah. Well, um, how do you know the buyer wants to buy my house? Well, I don't know if the buyer wants to buy your house, so I haven't seen your house yet. I could stop by today at 3.30, or would Saturday at one o'clock be better for you, so I could get a chance to preview your property, you know? Uh, so what I'm saying is, is, you know, don't say this if you don't really have a buyer interested in that area. See, many of you have all these buyers that you met in open houses. You have them in your, uh, you have them in your WebEx leads. You know, you, and you're sending them automatic MLS listings all the time, right? And you know what their criteria is and what they're looking for, and they haven't found anything yet that they like. You, some of you already have a handful of these people. Just make calls in that neighborhood in that area, using them as an example to make the calls. Okay. To get a yes response, do not hang up the phone. You need to probe, 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 and offer a fair, fair trade to close the appointment. Uh, so once you get, once they say yes to any one of these three approaches, you need to close. And you, the close is, and I wrote it down here for you, I'd like to stop by and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I'll show you a blank, and that way you'll know blank. So to not keep you in suspense any longer with that, go to the next page, and I'll tell you what a fair trade is. What do you mean by probe, probe, probe? Ask questions. Yes. Yeah, you need to, in other words, uh, you need to find out the why. Yes. Exactly. So the next page um, is the dialogue could go something like this. I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I'll give you a market analysis. That way, you'll know exactly at what price your home should sell. Can I stop by today at 6, or would 7 be better? And then what if they said this to you? I'm a, I'm a professional appraiser, and I know exactly what my house is worth. Oh, okay, great, no problem. And this is why you have to pick, I'm going to ask you to do this right now, look at all 14 of these fair trade items and pick the, the three that you like the best. Okay, go ahead and do that now. And if you don't know what it is, don't pick it. I'll tell you what it is later. <laughs> but pick three things that you feel comfortable that you could do for a seller. We already said comparative market analysis. Look at number six, an estimate of net, of what you'll net in your pocket. Well, I can appreciate that, that you're a professional appraiser and, you'd like, and you know exactly what your home is worth. Why don't I do this? Why don't I stop by and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I can tell you exactly what you'd net in your pocket after the sale of your property. Well, my wife's an accountant, and she used to sell real estate, and we know exactly how much we're going to net <laughs> in that pocket. Okay, not a problem. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. Why don't I stop by your house, and while I'm there, I can show you some um, uh, tips on how to prepare your home for sale. My daughter is a professional staging expert. <laughs> well, that's
that's no problem. <laughs> why don't I do this? I don't mind. <laughs> why don't I come by? Uh, why don't I come by and uh, take a look at your house? And while I'm there, I can give you some. Uh, I can tell you what your area competition is like. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. You said you're interested in buying a home. Why don't I? Why don't I come up with a list of homes that would fit your criteria of homes that you would like to buy? As to where you're moving to, and that way you can see what's on the market in that area. Right? Let me tell you something. You never have to do more than the first one. I'm just saying this for your own benefit, for your own information to convince you that, you know, this works. Because in your own mind, you're creating all these things. Well, they're going to say this or they're going to say that. And, then, you know, they're going to come up with these objections. What do I say then? What do I do then? And the reality of it is that. that Every, Ninety percent of everything you're worrying about right now, as I'm feeding you new information, never happens. Okay, so it's my job to keep, prepare you for things that will never happen, only so that you're convinced that you can move forward with this. You see? <laughs> Go to the next page. Uh, yes. This is the first time I've heard that term, fair trade. Fair yeah. trade. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fair trade. Like, a, hey, I'll do. You give me an appointment with you, and I'll do this. You give, <coughs> you give me an appointment, and I'll give you this. You know, well, it's a lot better than saying, hey, can I stop by and take a look at your house? Yeah. You know, it, it's better. It's just, it's more convincing. You're giving them an actual reason for you coming by. And, you know, again, you're going back to the reason again. You want to give them a reason. Uh, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> you know, handling stalls. Remember we talked about that? talked about, um, now, I taught you how to find the, the prospect by using one of the three dialogues that I just gave you. And I, I showed you how to close for the appointment using a what? A what? Fair trade. Fair trade, Fair trade right? And then you, they, you, they're going to give you maybe another stall. And they're going to say, well, you know what, uh, Beverly, I'd love to have you come over and take a look at the house, but uh, the reality of it is I, I just don't think it's a good idea to put the house on the market right now, okay? And so you might say something like this. The following are just some of the drawbacks. Uh, if you choose to wait to put your house on the market, let's figure out together just how much it will cost you to wait. Now, the way this dialogue is written, it's if you're at the listing appointment, you would take this piece of paper out and you'd pass that in front of them, and you'd go through the list with them, okay? When you're already at the appointment. This is the stall you're going to get. Uh, you're going to get a stall for... Um, them, for not, them not wanting to get you to come over to the house, and you're going to use the fair trade items to handle the stall to getting the appointment. But when, once you get the appointment, once you get the appointment and you share with them what, everything about you and your company, and they love everything, and they like the price and all that, and then they give you another stall, and that is, <laughs> we want to wait till the spring market. Well, let me go through some uh, some information, and let's check off everything that would apply to you personally if we do wait. See, it's never good to wait. Um, literally, honest to God, in the last week, two agents in the Long Meadow office came up to me and asked me a question similar to, when should they list it? <laughs> you know, or we we're thinking about taking it off the market and putting it back on. Do you think that's a good idea, John? What do you think I said? No. 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 When should they list it? No. 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 <laughs> Why? Because I know the drawbacks to waiting. Now you're going to know the drawbacks to waiting, and you're going to know them so that you'll be able to explain them to your seller, and your seller will know the drawbacks to waiting. See, you know, here's the thing. Um, if you don't give them a reason, the only reason they can come up with is that you want commission now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? Sure, you want me to list it now in the winter. You don't care whether I get top dollar for my property or not. You just want to get a commission. I mean, $1,000 to me is not $1,000 to you, is it? Right? That's what the seller's thinking. So you have to give them drawback. Give them, yes? I, I usually say this time of year, th this is the best time to list it because inventory is down and you're, you don't have much competition mm -hmm. right now. Love that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're giving them a benefit for moving forward, right? Which is excellent. Um, so that, that's good. And now, remember when we went back to before, we talked about um, the fear of loss <laughs> is a greater motivator than the reward of gain. See, if you, if you list it, you could expand on that, and you could say, if you list it in the spring, you're going to lose out on really good prospects because the people that uh, are shopping in the spring, I like to call them looky-loos, 
there are a lot of people that come out of the woodwork looking at homes in the spring just like going to yard sales or flea markets and they're, they're just out there shopping around a lot of people in the spring go to open houses looking for decorating ideas but they don't go That's in the middle right. of the winter right <laughs> who goes in the middle of the winter Shot buyers. serious yes, buyers yes, yes, and let yeah. me ask you a question when it comes to negotiating an offer price <coughs> On your home, do you want to deal with a serious buyer or a looky loo? Sure. Yeah, okay, great. <clears throat> now, um, so what you can do is explain to them what they're going to lose if they wait. Don't tell them what they're going to gain if they list now. Tell them what they're going to lose if they wait. So if you say rates might go up, and here's, I put this in parentheses right next because this happened at a seminar one time when I was teaching. This, uh, the drawbacks to waiting, and I said, you know, rates might go up, and this guy in the third row yells up, yeah, but they might go down. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, yeah, but if they go up, you lose. And then he just went, oh. <laughs> You know what's interesting about that dynamic, that dialogue, he didn't turn around and say, yeah, but if they go down, I win. Yeah. He didn't say that. You know, it's the fear, it just shut him right down. <laughs> you know, uh, if they go up, you lose. And it's that fear of, Wow, losing. You gotta move now. New homes might cost more, and that's true. Uh, your home might be worth less. Is that possible? Okay. Oh, yeah. Lose money doing that, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> lose speculation time. They sell when you want, to not when you have to. If you sell when you have to, you will take less money. Here's what people say to you sometimes when I say lose speculation time. They'll say, well, I don't have to sell now. And right. you say, well, when do you have to sell? I don't have to sell until the summertime. I, I don't care how long it takes. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> don't I don't have to sell now. Yeah. And say, that's great. But if you wait until the spring, and if you look at days on market, and you don't have to sell until the summer, and we list your home in the spring, and it's taking 140 days now to get an average property sold, to get you top dollar for your home, because I know money is important to you, isn't it? So now, if we wait, and now we're at a point where we get an offer, and you have to sell, you will take less money. And not, not because I'm saying it to you, but anybody would. I would take less money. If I had to sell, I would take less money than when I have to. So, so you want to negotiate an offer when you have to or when you want to, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Cost of vacant monthly maintenance. Now, well, what is that? You know, it doesn't cost me an extra money. Well, no one's living in the home. You have to live, cut, pay money to live somewhere. Here's another huge thing, and you can make a note of this because it's not in this list, is that a very, very expensive thing is to have vacant property insurance. It's probably three, three to four times as much money to, to have that than regular insurance. And the reason being is that vacant properties are more susceptible to uh, damage and vandalism. <laughs> I don't care what neighborhood it's in. <laughs> so if a water pipe breaks and no one knows about it for a week, how much damage can that cause? Yes. A lot. If you notice it right away, well, you can shut the water off and take care of it. Vacant property insurance is a lot more expensive. If they don't have it, you tell them they need to get it, and um, and you'll, you'll be giving them good advice. But it'll, be, it'll cost them more money to hold the property, which will motivate them to want to get the property sold because the property is costing more money to hang on to. Um, double house payments, discount points might go up. Uh, um, Roberta, there's yours right there. They were copying you. Lost in the spring shuffle, right? <laughs> right. Just what Roberta said. Uh, better to be one in four than one in four hundred, right? You don't get lost in the you know all this lot all this activity going on up there. You have less competition now. What about um, if you had the two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars now, you could invest it, you know, somewhere else and uh, get money rather than just hang out. Right, and and mm -hmm. keep it because right now they're keeping their money in real estate, and what's happening to their money in real estate? It's going down, down wow. right? Yeah, it's great. I love that. That's that's a great thing to think about. Lose money for repairs. You know, the longer you keep your house, the more after something can happen. That's true with it. Even your car, your automobile, whatever, no matter what it is, the longer you keep it. Yeah. Now, here's something else I want to encourage you to do: is um, uh, is to go out on what I call uh, bona fide appointments. Okay. Now, it's not. Um, good enough to just go out on appointments. You need to go out on what I call a bona fide appointment. Now, a bona fide appointment is, uh, has the following items. Uh, number one is you need their name, and, you, and number two, you need their address. And I wrote this checklist down for you, and I even put it in the form of a checklist. Do I have all these things from these people? Number three is 
Do they want to sell? Because when you start making these calls and you say, well, I can come over and give you a, fair, a, a market analysis and tell you what your home is worth, and they say, oh, okay, yeah, do that. And then you just go without qualifying the appointment and using what I call the bona fide one-step dialogue <laughs> that I've given you to use, and you're going to go over there and waste your time. You know, there's a thing called uh, perfect practice makes perfect. And, and I'm going to tell you a little, a little story about this, and just to make a point. Perfect practice makes perfect. You know, sometimes the reason why you're failing on listing appointments or working with buyers is you're working with the wrong ones, and you have this expectation in your mind that gets formed in your brain, and you expect certain things to happen. I'll give you an example. If I went out and I met with 10 sellers who didn't have to sell, and I went out on the first appointment and I said, um, you probably want to get the home on the market right away, so all you need to do now is sign this agreement so I can get the signing yard in a few days. And they say, oh no, we don't need to, we don't want to sell our house, actually we just wanted to get a, a CMA. Oh, okay, no problem. If I got that the second, third, fourth, by the fifth time, this is, my, this is what my dialogue would change to. I would say, well, here's the price, Mr. and Mrs. Fioria. You, you probably don't want to sell your home right now, and so I'm just going to leave. Um, have a good day. Call me, you know, when and if you ever want to, you know, sell your home. Take care. Here's my card. And, but did I close? No. I was conditioned to think that they just don't want, they want to think it over. So I'm acting and behaving in such a manner that causes me to not be successful. And we're wondering why we're not having success. <laughs> because I practiced so many times on people that didn't have to sell, I was expecting a certain result, and guess what? You get what you expect, right? Thank you. <laughs> you get what you expect. So practice on people that are truly motivated. Um, I, I love this with new agents. They say, you know, oh, I'm going out showing houses to this buyer. Really, how long have you been working with them? How many homes you show them? Show them 50 houses. Oh, 50 houses. Wow. That's, that's a, those are a lot of homes you show them. Yeah, you know. And so what happens is they think that in order to sell a house, they have to show 50 houses per sale. And I can tell you my average as an agent was no more than seven homes. But I only worked with buyers that what? Motivated. motivated, they needed to buy, they weren't looking for decorating ideas, they weren't hoping that if they find the right one, oh, I'll buy that one. <laughs> what do you mean by that? So what happened is I expected people to buy within the first seven showings or less, and I would even tell them that. I would say, Deborah, um, you know, I'm going to well, take, this is how I work, I'm gonna, we're going to narrow down the, first, the best you know, four to five homes that meet your needs the best. We're going to take a look at those homes. We're going to go back to my office. We're going to write up an offer because I'm telling her that that's what we're going to do because that's what I had done dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Perfect practice makes perfect. I have a very interesting, true story about perfect practice makes perfect. This gentleman, uh, two co two uh, police officers, right? Uh, they're practicing um, hand to hand combat, right? And uh, this was out in in the Midwest, and he had a partner that he worked with. Okay? And him and his partner used to go to the gym every day. And they'd go to the gym and they'd work out and they'd exercise and they would practice um, you know, self-defense moves. And so every day what his partner would do is he'd, he'd walk up behind him and he, and, and, and in the gym and he'd, say, and he'd say, okay, he'd say, stick him up. And he'd put, his, his, uh, put this fake wooden gun they had, that they would use and he'd put this wooden gun in, into his back. And he'd be standing there and he'd say, and, he, and, he, and he'd look over his shoulder like this, right? He looked, he looked this way first, and then he looked this way, and then he'd move, he'd grab the wrist, wrist, twist the wrist, grab the shoulder, turn his body this way, slam his partner into the carpet, holding his arm up like this, the gun like this, twisting the gun out of his hand, like that, and, and they would practice this over and over and over again, repetitively, so that it became what? It's automatic. Instinct, automatic, right? True story. They're in a, uh, a grocery store. It was being held up by two people. They couldn't find the second guy. Uh, he's walking around the corner looking for the guy, and guess what poked him in the back? The robber's gun. <laughs> and so he went like this. He looked over his shoulder. He looked over this way. He turned, grabbed the wrist, twisted it, grabbed the shoulder, slammed the guy into the floor, right? Ripped the gun out of his hand, picked the guy up, 
handed him the gun, and went like this again. No. <laughs> Why did he do that? Because he practiced that time and time. And when he was practicing with his friend in the gym, after he put him into the carpet, right? He pulled the gun out of his hand, he helped his friend up, handed his friend the gun, and said, okay, let's do that again. <laughs> True story. So you see, perfect practice makes what? Perfect. I, I took martial arts, and, um, and that's where I learned about this story. Because, you know, when you're working in the, in the martial arts, you, you're, you're beating up your friends. I mean, these are people that you like. I mean, <laughs> and, and so what would happen is, out of re and, you're, and you're taught you know, tremendous respect in the martial arts for your, for your opponent and, and for your partners in the gym that you're working out with every day. Um, and so it would be instinctive that after you slam your friend into the floor, you want to say, oh, how are, you, how are you doing? All right, come on up, you know, uh, uh, don't hurt me this time. Right, no, don't hurt me like I hurt you. Right. And so you're picking them up, and, and uh, the instructor used to, you know, say, don't ever do that. You know, once you get them down there, you finish them. You don't help them up afterwards, you know. And so it's perfect practice makes perfect. Stop practicing on people. So you need to go out on appointments that are bona fide appointments, not fake appointments. And, and here's what I hate to hear, and it drives me insane. And I know hate's a strong word, but I mean, this is pretty important. Uh, well, why are you going out on that appointment then? Well, I'm just to practice. I want to get a practice. I want to practice my listing presentation. Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> right? I want to practice my listing presentation. Actually, what you're doing is by not having a bona fide appointment, you're practicing failing instead of practicing winning. You follow me? Mm -hmm. If you walk away with a few points there, am I giving you some juicy stuff to good think stuff. about today? Good stuff. Yeah. good stuff? Okay, good. Now, uh, they want to sell. <laughs> How do you know they want to sell? Ask them, right? Uh, Pre-listing package. Either pre-mail it, send it in the form of a CD that they can pop in their computer, uh, drop it off, have a courier drop it off, have your spouse drop it off, you drop it off, and, and, and you get it to their house before you get to the appointment. The pre-listing package is every, that talks about you and your company, okay? Um, sometimes people have a pre-listing package with the market analysis and a sticky note on top of the marketing agreement that says, sign here before I come to the property. 7% typed in, you know, sign here before I get to the house. I, I worked with a gentleman who did that, um, and honest to goodness, he, he, he would sell over 60 houses a year, and if he would find, he was on the phone, literally, two headsets on at the same time, two phones, uh, he got permission from the manager to put, you know, a little uh, shelf up on the, uh, on, on the wall, and he had two phones and two headsets, and he would dial two number, a number here, and he'd dial a number here, and whoever picked up, live person picked up first, he hung up on the other one and talked to the one that picked up. And he would just go through his list and make calls, calls, calls every day. And if he found a prospect, he would send out a just listing packet. And when he got to the house, sometimes when he got there, you know, one time he told the story one time, he says, we, uh, we would joke him. I said, does that really work? That's, that's crazy. Are you serious? He said, true story. I got to the house one day. Somebody, um, you know, imagine this, right? Oh, Linda, you can role play with me. You're the real estate agent, right? Uh, he goes, I get to the door, and you're, you're the agent, right? I get to the door, they, they open the door, they go like this, and they shut the door. <laughs> he goes, I'm standing on the front step with the listing, never saw the house, never talked to the seller, and, and, signed? and signed at 7% commission, and he goes, and I just walked back to my car. Like this. And he's like, wow, this really is, this is great. And some of you are going out there, you, know, you don't have to do that on every one, that's the point. Now, if you do that all the time, is it going to happen every time? Of course not, right? There are exceptions to everything. But if you don't try, who knows, right? What's the worst thing that could happen? You could get there. You know, here's what you're afraid of. You're afraid they're going to call you up and say, don't even bother coming over. Why? You don't like the price? Okay, next. See, I don't care. If I have 10 appointments to go on that week, I'm looking for reasons to eliminate people. See, the problem is you have one appointment every 10 months, you're looking for reasons to list it. You see the difference in the mentality? And the difference in the mentality is the number of prospects you have. <laughs> you see why he was so cocky? He didn't care. He didn't have time to talk to everybody. He didn't want every listing because he had so many appointments. Well, how did he get so many appointments? Uh -huh. So many phone calls. 
picked up the phone, right? <laughs> so it worked. And you know what's interesting? He bought the headsets. You know, he didn't ask the manager to buy him one. He didn't wait for somebody to come up with some great idea as to why he should do something. He just did it. He just picked up the phone and started making the calls. He didn't wait for some fancy dialogue. You know, he just picked up the phone and said, uh, you're interested in selling your home. He didn't introduce himself. He didn't, he didn't have time. He was just he was a machine. going for it. Right, absolutely, like a machine, right? <laughs> Amazing. Had weekends to himself, had a life, great relationship with wife and kids, and still does today. He's very successful today. Mm -hmm. um, and so, <laughs> you know, he was in control. He took control. Make the calls. Now, uh, they have to both be home. John, is what you're saying is that if I get to the house and the wife is there and the husband is not, that I shouldn't give the presentation? Read my lips. Absolutely. Well, what do I say, John? I'm so glad you asked, let me tell you. Uh, you get to the home and say, oh, hi, Mrs. Jones. Uh, where's Mr. Jones? Oh, he had to go bowling, but, you know, that's okay. You just sit down, John, and, you know, I'll get you a cup of coffee or tea. You know, would you like some water or anything like that? And, you know, I've got some biscuits here. You can have, you know, well, cookies. Who gives biscuits? I'm sorry. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I'm thinking of Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. She's going to give me dinner, and I'm expecting dinner. Uh, well, he's not home. He's, he's bowling. I might as well eat there. Why not? Uh, so anyway, um, and then we, we, what do we do? We give the presentation to Mrs. Jones, and then what happens? George comes home and says, hey, what happened? Uh, and here's Mrs. Jones. I don't know. He charges a lot. It's like 7% to sell the house, and he thinks the house is only worth one twenty. Oh, forget him. Let's call that other lady. Let's, let's have her come in here and do it. And guess what? You lost the listing. Here's your fear. I know what you're thinking. I know your fears, because <laughs> I had them too. Uh, your fear is that if you leave, you might not get back in. Listen, you already lost the listing. Save yourself an hour and a half, would you? You're not going to get it. You, the homeowner cannot do your job to their spouse. They're not going to do it. I know one of you are sitting there right now thinking, oh, well, I did it one time and I did get the listing. That's an exception. That's like the gentleman who sent out the pre-listing packet with the sticky note saying sign here and the homeowner said here you go and shut the door. That's an exception. It doesn't happen all the time, right? <clears throat> if you follow this simple process and step, you'll have more time. So what am I going to do, John? I have the rest. Go spend it with your family. Here's, here's, here's my idea. Go back to the office and make more oh, calls. calls to get more appointments from people that are bona fide that are going to make the time to be home to do this. So I say to Mrs. Jones, I say, Mrs. Jones, Here's what I'm going to do. I don't mind because I really need to be able to speak with both of you at the same time in case Mr. Jones has questions. I want to be able to answer those intricate and detailed questions. And so what I prefer to do is just pick a time when you're both going to be home. I've got my appointment book right here. Um, what's a good time when, when you're both home? And make the appointment right then and there. Don't open your briefcase. Don't sit down and leave. Leave and then come back when they're both home. Okay? Two hours pre-scheduled. Two hours, John. Well, listen, if you're giving a good, <laughs> this cracks me up. You'll spend four hours showing a buyer homes that they don't buy, but you won't spend two hours properly handling all the objections and putting together a market analysis and a marketing plan that takes that long to present and close and fill out all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes you get enough time for an hour, hour and a half, you give your presentation, your company, history, your history, why they should hire you, um, the specific detailed marketing plan, providing a visual for every single one of the marketing pieces and why you use it, and the disadvantages if they list with another real estate agent who doesn't use this tool, that their home won't get sold, and you go through over, and you handle all their stalls and all their objections, and you get through this, and then you have to leave yourself time to write up the paperwork and give them the seller's description of property while you go off and measure the rooms and fill up the MLS data form, and you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't give yourself enough time. And that's bad. How do you get enough time? You want me to teach you how? Here's what you do. You say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm going to be in the neighborhood because I have other real estate appointments. Um, I, and before I have, I have some real estate appointments prior to yours, and I'm going to be in the area, but um, I might not get there between 6 and 8 o'clock. Could you block that amount of time for me out, you and Mr. Jones, between 6 and 8 o'clock? Will, will you both be home at that time and give me that time? And, and they say, yes. Okay, that's not a problem. Great. I need that window of time. No problem. What time do you show up? Six. Six o'clock. There's your two hours. Mm -hmm. If they say, well, no, George has bowling and he's got to leave at seven. Okay, no problem. Let's reschedule. 
And I know what you're thinking. You haven't had a listening appointment in three months. And you're like, wait a minute, John. It's my only well, What if I can't reschedule it? Listen, if you're making more calls, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> and if they do cancel, that's okay. They probably weren't that interested anyway. Mm -hmm. Move on. Next, right? Two hours. You need to know how much money they want because you need to know whether or not you have to handle the pricing objection. So that when you get there, you need to know whether you're going to play that David Knox pricing your home to sell video for them or not. You know, they may say, you know, if you ask them how much do you think your home is worth, and they say, well, I don't know, you're the expert, Becky, you tell me. Well, let me ask you, here's what you do, you ask them again in a different way. You might feel this, you're right? Well, let me ask you this, Becky, um, what are homes like you are selling for in your area? And guess what they do? They give you a price. <laughs> they say you know that. That's your no, job. they never say that, believe no. it or not. No, no. I, I'll, I'll, I've never, ever run into it. Whenever I, they say it the first time, Mark, this is the funniest thing. Uh, and we know because we're, we're like talking and thinking about this right now. And you think that they would say that. I've never had anyone say that. They always give me a number after I say that. It's, it's almost magical. And it's, it's humorous, actually. It's pretty funny because all I did was just ask them the same thing in a different way. And they give you the number. Okay? Now, and let's say they think, you know, well, houses like mine have been selling for around $150,000 uh, uh, in my area. That's what they're selling for. And you happen to know that and you do your market analysis and they're selling for $300,000. Well, you know that, you know, you don't have to have a detailed CMA, you don't have to watch a 20 minute video with them. I mean, you're going in there and you're gonna be a hero, right? So you know that's not an objection, it's not an issue, okay? Uh, in fact, you know that you could charge a 12% fee for service and they'd have plenty of money to pay you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So anyway. Um, yeah, sometimes it goes the other way though, when you say to them, Yes. What does the house sell in your area? They'll yeah. say, oh, yeah, but there are 300 the fellow yeah. across the street and all that. <laughs> and you go, like, no, it's yeah. not the market analysis, and it's not that at all. Yeah. Yeah. What Mark's saying is that usually they, uh, and you think this is true, mm -hmm. usually they oh, think their house is worth more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they usually feel like their house is worth yeah. more than yeah. it's worth? Absolutely. So what do you have to be prepared for the majority of the time? Again, folks, I'm teaching you things that will say, make you more money per hour. You don't have to do everything all the time. In the situations when you don't, then you don't have to. Um, so save yourself the time. You know, get home early. Go buy yourself a steak after the appointment. You know, do, you know enjoy life. Um, and the last item is you want to have the CMA completed before you get to the house. Now, um, that, that begs the problem, well, am I doing a one-stop listing appointment or a two-stop listing appointment? And you've heard me say this before, if you're new to the business, you must go twice. Go there the first time, inspect the property, measure the rooms, fill out all the information in your MLS data form because that's the, the form that gives you, ask, helps you ask all the right questions. And then what you simply do is you, um, uh, you come back to the office, you review it with me or, or your mentor or someone else in the office and say, you know, are these good comps? You know, and you put the market analysis together, you make adjustments, higher or lower for this or that. You know, it has a fireplace, that this one doesn't have a fireplace, this has a two-car garage, this has a no garage, you know, how should I adjust the pricing? When you learn the skill of appraising the value of the property, then I recommend you go on one-stop listing appointments because you'll get to the appointment and they'll tell you that it was a, um, you're going you're gonna to find things that are different than what they said on the phone and you need to make adjustments right then and there on the spot. And until you're able to do that, I recommend you go on two stops listing appointments. Um, and, uh, but once you get good at that, you should only go, on, go into the house one time. Uh, it will save you a tremendous amount of time, energy, and effort, okay? And how do you get good at doing that? Practice. Practice. How do you practice? Get on the phone. I get a, you went right to the phone, right? I, I was waiting for somebody to say, well, you go on more appointments. And I said, how do you go on more appointments? And you make more calls. How do you make more calls? Get on the phone. Get on the phone. How do you get on the phone? Terrible. What's that? Fear of loss. Yeah, fear of loss, right. I like that. Very good, right. So, right. <laughs> Becky just said, I'm going to give you my checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to give me the whole book. That's great. What's the balance, though? That's the other thing. <laughs> it's been a few weeks. If it's a low balance, then, you know, it's not, not a big motor. Either. Okay, now. So here's the dialogue, and, uh, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. So here's what happens. They, you go through the dialogue, right? And they say, yeah. Come on over. So I'm going to role play it again.
So I call up and I say, hello, uh, is this Mrs. Jones? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is John with uh, Carlson GMAC Real Estate. I'm calling to see if you've considered selling your house either now or in the near future. Have you? No. 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 Okay. Well, the reason I ask is we recently listed a house uh, near yours at uh, number 34 Pine Street. And uh, as a result of our extensive marketing, we generated quite a bit of interest for homes in this area, and, uh, and we need more inventory. Uh, do you know of anyone who's thinking about uh, listing their house at this point? Mm. How about yourself? And you say, yeah. well, maybe, right? I, I don't know. I was thinking about it. Uh, is that a yes? Well, yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, great. Now, some pe that's when people get all excited and they hang up the phone, they don't get the address and all this other good stuff, right? <laughs> so then you just simply go to your, um, your dialogue here. Okay, uh, so you set up an appointment and you, they, they, then you have to use the drawbacks, uh, excuse me, you use the... Um, fair trade. The fair, fair trade, fair trade. thank you. Jody, you... Somebody's paying. Thank you so much, I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, you use the fair trade and you say, um, this is, uh, well, I'd like to stop by now, or I could stop by later on in the week. I'm available Saturday at 3.30. I'd like to take a look at your house. And while I'm there, I can provide you with a market analysis that will tell you exactly what your home is worth in this market. And they say, okay, sure, that'd be great. Why don't you come by Saturday at 3.30? That's when the average agent hangs up and, say, and then goes to the appointment. The pro will move to this dialogue. And by the way, before I forget to tell you, the pros have these dialogues pasted on their desk. I see some of you have your certificates on your desk. You have pictures on your desk. You have um, stuff on your desk. You have little cartoons of, you know, uh, you know, all these things on your desk, right? Uh, a pro will take this out. Now, if you're in prospecting mode, what some pros do is they have, you know that white foam co uh, board? Like, like that, um, what do they call it? It's like a foam, foam, core. foam core board, you know, or a bulletin mm -hmm. board. And you take, they take that out and they put that on the front of their desk when they make their calls and all their dialogues are pasted right on the wall, right there on the board or on their desk, okay? Okay, well, I'll, when I, I'll see you tomorrow. As long as we're on the phone, <laughs> let's take a couple of more minutes. I'd like to add, do some research before I come over. May I ask you some questions? What do they say all the time? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, would you describe your home for me? And then that's the point where I'd like, will you take out the MLS data form? and you ask them all the questions, and you have that all filled out before you even get to the house. Now, there are some things that they're not going to know. You know, we have shingles on the out. Well, they have asbestos shingles, wooden shingles. I don't know. They're shingles. Okay. Well, leave that blank, and you fill it out later. Now, let me see if I understand. You want to sell your home and buy a new home on the other side of town. Is that correct? Or what you basically, at this point, you're going to restate what it is that they want to do and why they want to do it. Okay? Um, uh, you're, it, so if you find out, if you see that they own the home with a significant other, and you say your spouse will be there, uh, won't he? And uh, if they say, no, no, he won't be able to make you, just come over and talk to me, though. Well, I prefer that he be there, uh, too. Uh, let's do this. Let's rearrange the appointment when the three of us can get together. All right? So there's your dialogue there. How much do you feel your home is worth? Well, I don't know. You're the expert. You tell me. By the way, they don't tell you that. 99% of the time, they tell you what their home is worth. A lot of you don't know that because you haven't asked. <laughs> so when you ask, I'm telling you, they will tell you what they think their home is worth. The reason why I put the second one in there is really for you to give you the confidence to ask the question. Uh, very rarely will you have to use it, but in case you ever do, here it is. If they say, no, you tell me what the home is worth, or they really truly don't know, then you can ask what have homes like yours been selling for in the area. Do you have a mortgage balance? Approximately how much is it? How much do you feel you will walk away with to, make, uh, with to make a sale feasible? These are very, very important questions. You need to know so that you can create what's called a net sheet. Later on, when I explain to you the listing process used by top producers, I'm going to teach you the very, very valuable tool called the net sheet and how you can physically use it to absolutely get people to want to sign rather than you asking them to sign the offer. A very, very powerful tool. But you're not going to know how to use that unless you know what they owe on the property, okay? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. By the way, I've got an earlier real estate appointment so that I don't run late. Let's do this. Will you be home between 6 and 8 o'clock? 
they say yes or no. If they say no, we're just going to be there from 6 to 6.30. We're hoping that you were just going to come over our Roberta and just tell us what the price was. You know? And, then, and, and they say, okay, well, I need, a, I need a window of time. Let's reschedule. See, what happens, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I've been to a <coughs> listing appointment, and, and they've just said, well, just get to the price. We'll just, and, and I know the rule is don't ever talk about price until they're sold on me and my company. I don't ever want to talk about price until they're sold on me. So I don't get to that point. I, I look at them and say, listen, you're on page 10. I'm still on page 4. We're going to get there in a second. Just hang in there with me. Well, John, we can't hang in there with you. We have to, we have to go. I, and, and we have to, you know, I have to iron Charlie's bowling shirt, and he's got to be there in a half an hour. And, you know, this is, this is not a good, oh, no problem. I totally understand, you know. Uh, uh, let me do this. Let's reschedule, and I'll come back. Because I really need this amount of time to be with you to properly explain and then I, sometimes I had to remind people, this is the largest investment of your life. In most cases, it is for most people. And so um, let me ask you, you wouldn't want your accountant to rush through filling out your tax forms, would you, because you were in a hurry? I mean, you wouldn't want a doctor to rush through a diagnosis if you had an issue or problem, would you? I mean, you, you know, I, I'm a professional, and this is how I work, and uh, I know that other people may come in and just drop, you know, you know, uh, certain things on you, but this is a process, Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan. I need to be able to have the time to do a professional job, to be a professional, I need the time to do the job right. And so let's reschedule a time to come in. They're like, wow, okay. You've immediately differentiated yourself. And if you don't get the listing, you never had it to begin with. Mm -hmm. They already decided who they were gonna hire before you went out there. Don't take it personal, gang. And so they already had an agenda before you went there. Mm -hmm. And it didn't include you but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll be there between six and eight if they say yes. Uh, go to the next page, and uh, let me share with you what you're gonna miss if you don't show up to the next. <laughs> you know, the fear of loss, right? Oh, here's what I'm gonna lose if I don't go to the next training class. Now, uh, next Friday I will be at the uh, 2008 uh, convention, okay? And so the Friday after that, which is February 22nd, we're going to learn how to take these prospects that we have here, and we're going to work a little more in terms of converting them into appointments. We're going to spend more time on that than we did today. Now, I gave you, some, gave you some good things today, but we're going to spend some additional time because it's that critical. It's not good enough that you've learned how to identify the prospects, and then you, you have to learn how to close them and deal with the stalls a lot more than what you have now, a lot more than what I've told you today. Um, so I'm going to ask you, that I'm going to teach you the three power questions that most agents never ask sellers. We're going to go through that. And I'm going to share with you uh, a history-proven, psychologically sound, three-step conversion technique. Uh, that was, this technique is the greatest technique ever in the history of real estate. Okay? So um, anyway, did you guys have, uh, did you guys have fun today? Yeah, 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 some stuff. All right. well, I, I want to give you a compliment. Sure. Oh, thank you. I like those. Um, well, this, this goes back to the first 90-minute session we had, and I always had trouble, even in 30 years, getting listings. And you said something, oh yes, you gave me a point within dialogue about no problem, that sort of thing, and um, I just did that with an open mind at a house. I think I'm listing it tomorrow. She said, I'm interviewing four or five people. Are you interested in coming in? And I said, sure. And I went in and I did my presentation. I did a lot of homework and everything she said to me, I said, that, that wouldn't be a problem. I hate open houses, no problem. And or, my ordinary self would have been, I'd, been, I'd be butting heads and saying why I think the opposite. Right. And I just use that dialogue, and I'm listing that place tomorrow. Oh, that's great. You're yeah, listing it with no problem. That's with awesome. no problem. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? You'll be doing an open house and putting a sign in and all, all those things. You know, and, uh, I just learned to be nicer. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, that's, that, thank you so much for bringing that up. It's such a valuable, huge point because it's our instinct to want to defend why you know, well, because what to they're push saying is not true. And say, you know, look at I've been doing this a long time. I know where to get bad idea. <laughs> right, right. You know, there was uh, I, it reminds me of a story. I had a gentleman. I, I had the brochure together, and I had uh, it. It said from um, uh, from uh, ten thirty to twelve p.m. And he came up to me, and, and uh, he was an agent. And I was managing the office. He was brand new to the business, and he said, "Hey, <laughs> your brochure here says uh, p.m." And I looked, I said, yeah, it does. He's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a mistake, obviously, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
like he was trying to, you know, just one up you. Yeah, one up you. Yeah, you know, said PM. So I said, okay, yeah, that's right. So now I was thinking about this actually this morning as I was driving. This guy is still walking around to this day thinking that 12 noon is AM instead of PM. Uh, but okay. it's okay because it was like no problem. Yeah, I, geez, I guess I gotta fix that. <laughs> I didn't want to. I just didn't want to argue with the guy, you know, just to kind of because he was the type of person that he's just looking for a fight, and I wasn't going to give him one. So, you know what? Yeah, pick your battles. All right. So, uh, but that's that's great. Thank you. Yes. I wanted to say also, um, I had the courage last night to go on a listing appointment. I spent four hours there. Wow. Oh, wow. But because there were three siblings, they had a lot of yes. questions. They already felt they were going to enlist me. Yes. Hiding when these were prior. Yes. <laughs> Before I had gone, because they had interviewed a couple other people, but based on the fact that they wanted a local realtor, yes. and they already had my card, yes. they kind of were ready to go with me. Mm -hmm. But I went with everything filled out, with the market and with the CMA market analysis, and uh, they had no real objections. Even when I gave them the price, I explained to the, them why they were like, oh, just the look on their face was. I could tell they were thinking five, and I gave them reasons why. If, you know, six yeah. was. Can I tell everybody? Can I tell everybody why you didn't get any objections? Because you had a great presentation. Yeah, give yourself more credit. Sandy. They didn't yeah. know you, you yeah. sold them on yourself when you. Yeah. 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 A good a good presentation like eliminates them. objections. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. Yeah. It, it was easy, and I walked away with everything signed. It's not going to go on the market till March first. Yes. But wow. we're, we're ready to go. Excellent. Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Great. Congratulations. Well, thank you all for being here today, too. It makes me uh, it makes me happy that when I come into the room that somebody's here to talk to, because otherwise I wouldn't have anything to do this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, keep your clipboards in the room, please. Keep your clipboards in the room. Thank you for that. Well, People are going to make phone calls and things. Yeah. 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 That's an excellent idea. Every week. Success stories. John, you're... It's a nice idea of writing down yeah. everything. Yes. I did it for a day and a half. Okay. Yeah. Drove me crazy. <laughs> Drove oh, everybody like around me crazy. Time management? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Upscale. <laughs> and finally, I put it down. Mm -hmm. But yes. it still has a lot of All right. <laughs> but it was fine. But you try it, and, and while you were doing it, it made you more aware of what you were doing. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. if you do a lot of new things, yeah. 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 Uh, not only am I going to give you the printout, but I'm also going to be so the DVD of the open house. So you're going to have the printout and the DVD, and you're going to be able to watch them in your office. I need about another week to process and get it all together and copy it onto DVD and print out the labels and all that good stuff. But I'm actually going to give each manager a library of all of the sessions. So you can even go back and do this one and brush up on it. I'm just going to show you. Yeah, I'm not sure.